North American spec cars and European spec cars. There's a lot of differences between North American spec vehicles and European spec vehicles. And I don't mean just the size or the types of vehicles offered, but actually the legal and regulatory differences between North American spec cars and European spec cars. It's something that the average consumer probably doesn't know, but car enthusiasts know about these differences. And we often refer to EU spec or rest of world spec versus North American spec. Today, I wanna to cover the differences between North American spec vehicles and European spec vehicles and why I believe European spec vehicles are actually safer than North American spec vehicles because of these differences. So let's jump into it. So before moving to the Netherlands, I was used to North American spec vehicles and the look of North American spec vehicles. Things like amber parking lights, side markers, red turn signals. But actually after living in the Netherlands and spending more time with European spec vehicles, I realized that European specs are actually safer and actually better looking. You don't have the amber parking signal, you don't have amber turn signals in the rear. You know, there's a lot of these differences I'm gonna jump into. So go ahead and use the chapter markers uh, if you wanna bounce around and see the differences, but I'm gonna cover all these in a bit more detail. Also, it's worth mentioning that the US and Canadian specs are pretty much the same. Canada uses kilometers and requires daytime running lights. But aside from that, basically the specs of the cars and the regulatory differences are the same between Canada and the United States. Europe has uh, a different spec and it's also uh, in line with a lot of other countries that's outside of Europe. And those are the main differences that I'm gonna to compare today. All right, the first thing is the one that I'm the most passionate about and that's red turn signals versus amber turn signals. The rest of the world has amber turn signals like this. It is safer, it is easier to distinguish between the brake lights and the turn signal. The rest of the world does this. In North America, red turn signals are allowed. And not just red turn signals, but actually the same light fixture that's used as the brake sometimes is used as a turn signal. In some cars, it's a separate bulb from the brake light, but they're still red. In this case, in the Mercury Grand Marquis, as you can see, it's the brake light that's flashing to be the turn signal. This has always drive me nuts, even when I lived back in the States, because it's hard to distinguish when a car is braking versus turning. You have to pay a little bit more attention because it's hard to distinguish, you know, is the red, light turning on because it's the brakes? Is it turning on because it's the turn signal? Sometimes bulbs are out and it's hard to tell. So I've always been passionate about this. This is how it should be. This is how the rest of the world is and this is how it should be. But um, this is allowed in, in North America and it's actually quite common. And I've even heard from American car people that they prefer the look of the red turn signal, even though amber is objectively safer. So the Mercury Grand Marquis, even though it's here in the Netherlands, actually has red turn signals. The Netherlands is one of the few countries in the world that does allow red turn signals. There are some European countries and other countries that do allow it. So it's one of the things I didn't have to adapt when I brought the car over here. But objectively, I, I believe the amber turn signal is much better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you prefer, red turn signals or amber turn signals? There's even a whole Facebook group dedicated to this. I think a lot of people are passionate about this topic, but yeah, I believe amber turn signals are much better and much safer for drivers. The next big difference that I wanna cover is amber parking lights uh, or side markers as they're also called. It's a bit hard to see here because in the Mercury they changed out the bulb, but in North America, most cars have an amber side marker parking light that is required as part of the headlight system. Whereas you see here on the BMW, um, the parking lights don't require that. And, and if you look at a US spec BMW 3 Series, there's a big amber uh, side marker light here, which I think is quite ugly. Uh, it's a look that I was used to back when I lived in the States, but actually after living abroad, I realized this is a much cleaner look. And actually what value does that amber side marker light add? I don't think it's necessary. Much cleaner look. Um, here on the Mercury, they converted the light to uh, white, but it was an amber parking light, the same here. But yeah, it's just a difference that I don't think is necessary. Uh, and I think the European spec looks a lot better than North American spec. The next big difference is side turn signal indicators. So the EU and pretty much the rest of the world require side turn signal indicators. Most of the time they're integrated in the mirror like this now, but back in the day they used to be side uh, mounted on the fender like you see on the Mercury here. North America doesn't require this, and to me this is a key safety feature because when you're driving alongside a car and you want to know if that car is going to be moving into your lane, you can't see the front and rear turn signals if they're signaling their lane change. Side marker indicators are key and really key a safety feature. Nowadays, most uh, new cars in the US do have side marker indicators on the mirrors because it's kind of seen as a luxury feature, and I think it's something that the European brands kind of influence in the North American market. And actually, if you look at something like a Toyota Corolla or a Hyundai in the US, by default, they don't have the side marker turn signals, but um, higher end trims do because it's kind of seen as a luxury feature because of the European brand influence in, in North America. 
But I do think this is a really key safety feature that should be required on all vehicles around the world. And it surprises me that in North America, it's not a safety requirement. It's not a required feature at all. Next thing I want to cover is rear fog lights. So in the EU and most other markets around the world, rear fog lights are a required feature or are just featured on cars. And they're usually on the driver's side or the center point of the vehicle. In this case on the 3 Series, it's just on the driver's side. Personally, I would prefer if it was on both sides. But this helps with rearward visibility in poor conditions such as fog or heavy rain. And this is a really key safety feature that I wish was available or actually required in the United States and Canada because I've been in many situations in Florida in really heavy rain where you can't see very far in front of you, you can't see the car in front of you. And what people in Florida do are put on their hazard lights so you can improve the visibility, which is illegal and is kind of a dumb workaround. Rear fog lights solve that problem. This is something that should be standard in the US and Canada. And actually, on European brand cars in the US and Canada, they do offer the feature. They actually just ship it there anyway. Um, it's not required, but they, they leave the configuration as is, and they have the rear fog lights. And the funny thing that I see is people don't know how to use rear fog lights in the US and Canada. You can see some B-roll footage here of cars in Canada driving around with rear fog lights on in normal conditions, because actually I believe that people don't know the difference between the buttons, and they think that these are regular fog lights, but they're actually rear fog lights being misused. So it's really funny to me, but I think if there was education and regulatory requirements in the United States and Canada for rear fog lights, people would use them and it would improve safety and poor visibility conditions. The next difference I wanna cover is something that I notice each time that I'm switching between this vehicle and the BMW is the side mirrors. And this was something I didn't even really know about before living here. So in North America, the side mirrors on cars are a little bit different. The driver's side is pretty flat and the passenger side is a bit more convex, but then it has this text in it that you see objects in mirror are closer than they appear. So you have different focal lengths for each of the mirrors. Um, on the passenger side, it helps with the blind spot inside visibility, but on the driver's side, it's quite flat and you have a pretty big blind spot. On the EU spec mirrors, both are convex and there's even a part that acts like a blind spot mirror. So it's objectively safer because you have a wider field of view, you have a smaller blind spot. The problem is the image is wider and the vehicles are a little bit smaller, which uh, affects your perception of the size. And so in North America, they only allow that on the passenger side, which to me, it's a safety thing. If you allow it on both sides of the car, you have better field of view smaller blind spot and it's objectively safe. Next difference is license plates and you can see American and Canadian style license plates are a lot smaller. In some cars they look okay like this Grand Marquis was obviously designed for the smaller license plate but in some other cars this small format doesn't look very good. It doesn't complement the design of cars very well and in my opinion actually uh, the American and Canadian size license plate is a little bit less safe because the, the characters are smaller. You can see over here if I were to take a Florida license plate and put it on a BMW 3 Series, which is probably the first time this has been done, um, you can see what it, how small it is in comparison to the Dutch license plate. The letters are a lot smaller, it's harder to see from further back, and actually, I think the Dutch license plate and the kind of European style wide license plate complements the look of the car a little bit better, especially in the front. So I think it's safer and it just looks better to have the European style license plates. Now this varies a lot. Different countries have different regulations about license plate sizes. I'm not going to go into all of those details, but let me know what you prefer. Do you prefer the European style license plates or do you prefer the American style license plate? Let me know in the comments below. Ultimately, I do wish that the regulations would align from North America to the rest of the world because that would actually allow for European spec vehicles and other vehicles that are currently not sold in the North American market to actually be sold there because the regulations would align and that would be allowed. But until those regulations align, which I don't think that'll ever happen, we'll have differences between North American spec vehicles and European and rest of the world spec vehicles. So that's pretty much it. Those are the main differences I wanted to cover between EU spec vehicles and North American spec vehicles. Like I said from the beginning, I prefer the look and, and safety features of European spec vehicles, but there are also some features I didn't cover in North American spec vehicles that are nice, like remote start, how some states don't require front license plates, um, different safety features, and there's a lot of other differences that you can't see, such as suspension differences, tire differences. I can't cover all of those in one video, but these were the things that I wanted to cover that you can really see when you look at the two different vehicles, and um, those are the differences that I like on the European spec vehicles. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I crazy? Um, do you prefer the look of North American spec vehicles? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next time, thanks for watching. We've never seen a 3 Series Touring with a Florida license plate on. <laughs>